Now let's delete the automatically generated architecture and see how it can be built manually using the canvas editor. The existing architecture can be deleted with the highlighted icon. All the different internal components can be added from the canvas right-click menu. First, we need to create network interface blocks that are required to bridge between the internal AMBA protocols and the internal fleet-based generic transport protocol. Different network interface blocks are required depending on whether the interface is a slave or master and the AMBA protocol that it uses. Each network interface supports optional retiming stages via its right-click menu on the canvas. These can be enabled to meet physical timing constraints. Once our network interface blocks, so all the ASNI, AMNI, HMNI and PMNI blocks have been properly added, we can add the number of routers to route the fleets within the interconnect between the different links. You can drag and drop any of the created blocks as per your layout requirements. If you want to change the clock domain of a certain internal block, such as a router, you can do it from the selected components right-click menu. The component-specific right-click menu contains the attributes that can be modified on the corresponding component. HMNI and PMNI blocks must be connected to low-wire routers, so in such a case, we will need to switch the corresponding router from the default high wire to low wire mode. The difference is that high wire routers support four channels, so dedicated read write request and response channels, while low wire routers support only two channels, where the request and response channels are shared between reads and writes. We will then switch to connection tool mode to draw the connections between the created network interfaces and routers. If a connection is deemed too long, the tool will highlight it in red. In such a case, you can either change the die properties and constraints that are available through the appropriate icon, or you can add additional pipeline routers. If you try to connect a high wire router to a block that supports only low wire, then the tool would gate it through an on-the-fly running check displaying a proper error message. Next, we add the config NI blocks that are necessary for accessing the configuration register space. As we need access from both power domains, we set up two config NI instances, one for each power domain, and then connect those up in our topology. Depending on how many power domains and clock domains we set up, we also need to create PCU and CCU devices, so power control units and clock control units. We will need one PCU per power domain and one CCU per clock domain. Those blocks can be drag and dropped on any free location, there is no connectivity required. Those devices will always be added to the rendered RTL. If you look at the toolbar, you will notice a set of icons, which are for launching different built-in automation flows. The root analysis flow can be used to automatically create the data routes in the architecture that implement the data path defined in the specification. The created routes can be navigated from the CoreLink NI routing tab, where the selected route is highlighted on the canvas. A duplicate link may be deemed necessary to meet performance targets on a specific root link or to break a potential deadlock loop. A duplicate link defined per channel creates a physically separate set of wires for the transactions on that route to use. Select any link and the appropriate channel that requires a duplicate. As you can have multiple power, clock and fleet width domains across your architecture, you will need to add the required bridging where necessary. You can add those manually between the appropriate blocks using the canvas right-click menus, or you can also use the built-in automation flows. Selecting the PCDC analysis flow will analyze your existing architecture 
and will add or remove PCDC or power and clock domain crossing components as appropriate. Here, as you can see, the tool added eight PCDC components at the necessary places in our architecture. Similarly, you can use the CERDES analysis flow to add or remove CERDES components where necessary. Here, the tool inserted one CERDES component on the connection between our high wire and low wire router. In the NI700, the configuration network exists separately from the data network. You can use the configuration network generator flow from the toolbar to automatically create it. Once it's there, you can toggle between the data network and the configuration network views using the palette. There are further view settings, such as to enable device labels or to highlight the different power and clock domains on the canvas. Users can run the built-in architecture design rule checks several times during configuration to give an early indication of any issues. This can also point to the next modeling steps required, for example, missing local rules to the configuration space in case the configuration network has not yet been created. There is also a built-in deadlock loop analysis tool that you can run to identify cases where a loop in the topology may cause deadlock. In case such condition is found, you have several options to resolve it, for example, by changing the topology of your design or adding resource planes or duplicate links. You can also create logical groups, which we already mentioned earlier, but haven't gone into the details yet. The logical groups can be used if you want to split your NI700 design into multiple tiles or hierarchies. The components that are assigned to the same logical group will be rendered into the same RTL hierarchy. Your different logical groups will need to be created in the specification under Groups Logical Groups. Here we will create a dedicated logical group for each power domain, so we will split our design according to power domains. Once we set up our logical groups, we can go back to the canvas and assign the different internal components to the appropriate logical group using the right-click menu. As we are splitting our design according to power domains, we can use the power and clock domain filter to see which power domain our components belong to. You can also select multiple components and set the logical group attribute at the same time. The components that need extra care are the PCDC blocks that can have different upstream and downstream power domains, so in such case they need to have their logical groups set accordingly. Once all components have been assigned to the appropriate logical group, you can use the logical group filter to check that the assignments have been properly made. If you go back to the specification, you can also see a list of components for each logical group. When the design is complete, you can generate the deliverables using the corresponding icon in the toolbar. The deliverables include the Verilog RTL, 
implementation constraints, UPF definitions, IP exact description, and the placement TCL dictionary. You can also generate a static latency report providing an estimate of minimum latency on each path within the NI700. and an area report that gives an estimated area for all elements that you specified on the canvas. You can browse through your project data and check the deliverables from the Navigator tab. As you can see, you have your design split according to the two logical groups that are instantiated within the top-level component. The Canvas toolbar also allows you to export your NI700 design as a single YML configuration file that will store the complete specification and architecture. You can recreate an NI700 project by importing this file into Socrates and then you can modify the design or regenerate all deliverables as you want.